When was the last time you bought something because a salesperson pushed you into it? You probably remember being pushed and not buying anything, right? Pushy sales tactics are not very effective. So my question to you is, are you pushing your sales team to push and also telling them not to be too pushy? What can you do differently? I'm Jennifer Boxavanis. I help sales teams and professionals with sales roles increase their closing rate. And today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to pull in customers rather than pushing them. There is so much information out there for buyers. Attraction marketing and demand driven sales are methods to pull in customers to make them find you and to trust you before they ever interact with a salesperson. Why is this better? Because the power is with the consumers now, and that is true for both B2C and B2B sales. Information is at everyone's fingertips. Potential customers don't need to rely on a salesperson to get the background on a product or a service anymore. With a quick search, a customer can find out a lot about a person, a business, a product, or a service before they talk to anyone in sales. No effort needed. On top of that, potential customers now expect that products and services should be tailored around their needs. There are many options out there, and as I was just saying, they're easy to find. So how do you pull customers in? It breaks down into three phases that will ultimately help you close along the way. Phase one, know your target market. Phase two, establish trust. And phase three, engage and keep on engaging. In today's video, I wanna focus on the first phase, understanding your customer base and target market. I'll be making a couple more videos to dive into phase two and phase three soon. So for the first phase, know your target market. How much do you really know about your potential customers? Do you understand their pains? Do you understand what drives and motivates them? There is nothing worse than receiving a cold email or a cold call about a service that has zero interest and has nothing to do with your reality. This is called product dump. Don't do it. There are some simple steps in this phase to start the pooling action in your target customers. It may seem like homework, but honestly, these steps work. First, categorize your contact list. What types of companies, segments, or people are ideal for your product or service? Who needs what? Why do they need it? Second, prioritize those groupings. Who has the highest purchasing power for what you offer? Who has the greatest need for what you're offering? They are on top of the list. With each category, write up or take notes on the biggest challenges the company, department, or group is facing. What is their vision? What is their most desired outcome? Write it down. This is step number three, and this process is called Ideal Customer Profiling, and it's a powerful profiling tool for both marketing and sales teams but you really need to write it out. I'm not kidding. Make this a workshop for your sales team and make sure to bring in your marketing team for their ideas. If you're on your own or have a small sales team, writing this out is still important. It will give you the big picture and give you something to refer back to as you continue on your mission to pull in customers instead of push. With all this listed out and written down, you can cross check which of your services or products helps each type of your ideal customer. Really make sure that your service or product actually solves the customer's challenges or helps them achieve their vision. This information can be used to tailor your outreach emails, to make warmer calls, service presentations, to create highlights in your sales meetings, or to give some focus to your proposals. With this basis of truly understanding your target market and potential customers, you can then move on to phase two, creating trust. I hope you found these tips helpful. When you're finally closing with a new customer, remember this is actually the culmination of many small victories of trust and engagement, and it all starts by knowing your audience and knowing their pain ahead of time. In my next videos, I'll be sharing some new methods on gaining the trust of your audience and continuing engagement. Over on my blog, I've got more thoughts, more tips, and more tricks on how to boost your sales. The links are in the description below. 
and let me know your questions and thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Boxavanas. Stay strong and happy selling.